Howdy there. I'm Matt McKinley and we're burning daylight. Good morning, daylight burners. How we doing today? Hope everybody had a good weekend and uh, hope you enjoyed the show with Mr. Kane Boswell. <clears throat> today I've got uh, another another friend of the show, a uh, listener from for you know quite a ways back. And uh, we've, we've visited a couple times on on social media and uh, seemed like a cool guy. And he, I knew he was a boot maker. I've seen some of his work, does, does some really cool work, it looks like. And then he told me he also played, played a lot of country music uh, over the years. And, uh, but he never did, uh, never did link any of his stuff. And I guess I didn't, I didn't think to ask. Didn't, I really, uh, the way he made it sound, it, he just kind <clears> of <throat> was playing gigs here and there. Turns out he's got a, an album or, album or two out, and he sent me a link to the album after we got done talking, and uh, he should have been submitting that to the to be on the show a long time ago. The kid's pretty good. So, anyway, um, his name's Jake Houston. He's out of Reno, Nevada. Uh, he's got a custom boot shop, and uh, it does still does some gigs, so uh, we had a we had a pretty cool conversation. I think you'll like it. And uh, I'm going to have him back on for one of our music episodes. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mr. Jake Houston. All right, folks, I'm here with uh, Mr. Jake Houston with uh, Houston Boot Company. And uh, he's uh, been a follower of the show for, for uh, well, pretty well since the beginning now. And uh, he's uh, messaged me some song requests here and there, and we've just kind of chatted back and forth. Uh, almost met up a couple times, haven't yet, but... Uh, here in the near future, I'm sure we will. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, Mr. Jake Houston to the show. Oh, howdy there. <clears throat> How's it going? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Doing well. Doing well. Just uh, finishing up a long day in a boot shop, you know. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Well, you're, are you from Reno originally? Well, I, I grew up in uh, Split. You know, I grew up halfway uh in Carson City, Nevada, and then uh, the rest of, like, once I hit high school, we were living out in Dayton, Nevada, and then I've been up here for a few years, but. Okay, um, so just kind of western Nevada in general, huh? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's, uh, and uh, and you own your own boot shop? Yes, I do. I uh, just opened it in June at the Reno Rodeo. Uh, got a booth space down there and that was my first jump into the deep end if you will and uh been making boots past couple years but i figured it was time to go out on my own and start doing it cool and how, how old are you i'm 26 well i'll be 26 what? next month okay 26 so uh so what got you into uh making boots well it was uh, a bit of a journey i you know i um when we moved out to Dayton High School, you know, it's more rural out there than Carson City was even back then, and uh, started hanging around with some bull riders and some dudes like that. Um, but I always, I always played music. I'm a musician also, mm -hmm. so I, I was always playing country songs. And you know, I had a band and I put out a couple records. But country music kind of got me into that whole thing. And then um, a few years back, I started learning how to tool leather. Because uh, I wanted a friend to make me a guitar strap, he said he'd just teach me how. So um, I figured that'd be, you know, kind of a fun thing to learn. And uh, I was tooling leather for a while. Um, a friend of mine opened up a shop in Reno, and I had a little workbench set up in there, so I was selling belts and wallets and that kind of thing. And then I wanted to. Okay. Yeah. So I was doing that for a while, and I kind of wanted to expand my horizons. So it was between doing saddles or cowboy boots and um you know there's not there's more saddle makers here i think than there are boot makers at least in the reno area i, I think there's a couple guys out in washoe valley doing saddles but there's there's no boot makers really but i uh i walked into a shoe repair shop and kind of asked for an internship so i could try to learn how they're constructed and everything mm -hmm. just by repairing them and they gave me a job so that kind of started it all and then um, found found some YouTube pages that had some decent information. And one of the ladies doing the YouTube thing had a DVD set out that my wife bought for me. 
so I kind of jumped into it full bore. And that's been, okay. Yeah, so it's been kind of kind of a self taught thing, you know, trial and error. And then um, I uh, last year we went up to the Pendleton Roundup, and I met a boot maker up there, and he's kind of been my mentor since. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so you're uh, you're kind of primarily building like the the tall riding heel buckaroo style boot, I would imagine. Yes, that's that's kind of what I like to do best. That's my favorite style of boot. I like real tall tops and the, you know, the dog and heels and whatnot. But I could build, you know, like this pair I'm doing right now for a customer. It's got a little walk-in heel on it. With It's kind of more of a dress boot. But, okay. Um, yeah, any, any style of Western boot, really, I could wrangle down pretty well. Nice. And it seems like that's the, that the, the riding style is the, is the style out here. Back home, everybody likes uh, like a, a roper heel, but built up just a, just a touch, just a little bit taller of a roper heel. And out here, it seems like everybody likes the underslung, you know, yeah. kind of traditional buckaroo style boot. And uh, so I, I, I've got a, uh, uh, it's, it's like a slight riding heel. It's, um, I forget what it's called, uh, but it's it's just slightly tapered. It's not not the real severe underslung. Right. I'm not I'm not much of, uh, enough of a buckaroo for that style. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, those are tough to walk in. But uh, yeah, that's that's cool. I um you know I just bought my first pair of custom boots this last uh, this last winter, and uh, and I I should have done it before, but it's always you know it's the sticker shock up front. And you're just like, oh man, it's a lot. But then you go buy. I bought a pair of Twisted X boots uh, at Boot Barn, and they were the the closest thing to anything I really wanted. And I still didn't particularly like them. Mm -hmm. They were like two hundred and ended up like two hundred fifty bucks, something like that. And I was, well, yeah. and I knew if I wear them every day, I'll blow through them in about six months. Maybe yeah. get a year out of them. Maybe. And that's if I, you know, oil them like every other week. And, uh, and, uh, so I was like, ah, I finally, I ordered from Beck Cowboy Boots out of Amarillo and, you know, okay. they've been in business for a long time. They, yeah. and, uh, but so I finally, I broke down and bought them and ah, I should have done it a long time ago. They, they, everything fits better. They're well, mm -hmm. you know, it's better made. And I, I, I tell people that now it's to just save up your money and, and buy a, buy a good pair of boots because that, it'll it'll save you money in the long run and it they're 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 just they're they're way way better it's it's hard to describe how much better they are until you till you get one that's made for your foot it's it's a world of difference oh yeah it's a you know that's a thing i run into a lot with people it is a it is a sticker shock at first you know because most custom stuff you, you usually start you know almost a thousand bucks and then it goes mm -hmm. up and the, you know the difference in the fit is probably the biggest point you know because it feels like and you know i always wore even before i was making boots you know because i've been wearing boots most of my life and it was just kind of even though you know i'm not a i'm not a hand or anything by any means but you know just living out there and doing country music i you know i've been wearing boots for a long time and i got pretty picky even before i started making them about kind of what brands i'd buy like I bought a yeah. lot of like uh, Olathe's for a long time mm -hmm. were great. And, you know, um, just any shelf boot kind of like that, like D bar M here in Reno sells a good shelf boot that's made pretty well. But um, I always thought those fit real good and wore pretty well until, you know, I started making them myself and you could really feel the difference, you know, um, this is like, it's, you know, it fits like a glove. There's no, no uncomfortable parts and they're tight on your foot they're snug but not too tight usually and it just makes a world of difference as far as fit goes but uh, even the custom stuff you know they're built out of like, all the boots i do they're 100 percent leather you know i don't do most shelf boots have like a cardboard insole that they make the boot around they're yeah made, they're just made pretty cheap but you know i do all leather insoles and steel shanks and not, you know, build the heels layer by layer instead of doing like press board kind of stuff that a lot of these companies use, but you know, the materials that go into them and just the, the way they're done last a whole heck of a lot longer and feel a lot better for a long time. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, they uh, they they're just yeah they're they're just better at every every sense of the word. And uh, but you don't realize how much better until you you get a, a set on your on your feet and you're just like, oh well, yeah, it's a just a night and day difference. Oh yeah, yeah, especially uh, especially for you know I don't know it's I always kind of thought you know most of these dudes like uh anybody working in feedlots or cow calf operations or anybody who spends any time in a saddle it's, it's almost like a tool mm -hmm. you know, your boots because you got you know you're in the stirrups all day and you got your spurs got to stay on there and you can't be worrying about your heels coming off or none of that and it's you know it's, they good pair of boots to save your life even oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's 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 true i mean that and it's amazing, like just how much better you feel when, uh, just like you said, even in the, in the saddle. If you're just relaxed in the saddle, it's still you're putting weight on 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 those shanks, mm -hmm. and uh, and when they fit better, it just you you feel a lot better at the end of the day. Not as wore out, and and I, I it just it's little it's a little bitty difference, but it makes makes it all I mean it makes all the difference. But yeah, yeah. So uh, you you said you were you were kind of a country music star for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, star in quotes. You know, um, me and my band always joke because we got some write ups in the local paper and whatnot. But we'd always say we're shitty paper famous. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's kind of I like it. That's <laughs> that's what everybody should strive to be. Those are those yeah, are the right. best times. So <laughs> shitty yeah. paper famous. That's awesome. Paper famous. <laughs> yeah, you know it's. Um, it was, you know, I hit it pretty hard for a long time there. I, you know, I started playing music, like performing for people, I think when I was 15. So I've, okay. been, doing it. I've been doing it 10 years. And I, you know, I got, I got to the point where, um, it's funny, I was just listening today, that episode you did with uh, Sam McHugh and yeah. uh, your cousin Robbie and them. And uh, he was talking about band drama like dealing with yeah. videos and all that, that is a real problem. Oh, I, <laughs> you know? I, it's what everybody I've ever talked to that's in a band says, you know, like they, you know, everybody thinks, you know, that you're all the best of friends, but usually, especially like the big time bands, like they all hated each other and the, but mm -hmm. they could somehow put it together to put on a show. Right. Yeah. And that's, you know, I got to the point where it was just dealing with, uh, the egos and stuff it was just it was just a lot because i was i was getting ready to open this boot shop and i was working full time and doing the band full time and there wasn't a whole lot of time to sleep or anything like that you know so it got kind of kind of wore down on me a while and um i think i've stepped back enough from it now it's been probably six or seven months since i've really played a show with, a, with my group but um back to the point now where i'm probably get started back up on again i got a couple records i want to do this year and uh some shows i want to play again but awesome yeah so uh would you guys just kind of toured here locally or do you uh did you go around quite a bit you know we never traveled too much we'd, we'd play a lot here in california a um, little bit of the northwest as well but we never got too far from home um you know, it, and also the thing here in town, it's kind of hard to book good country shows. Like a lot of people, I'm sure as you've you've noticed with all the music you listen to, a lot of people don't stop in Reno. So it's no, <clears throat> no, it's few and far between if you ever get a good like uh, country show here. So then you know, it goes the same way with the local music. But besides myself, there's probably only two other bands here that play like more traditional country and western stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. I uh, that uh, Huckleberry Road uh, opened for for Boland here a couple weeks ago, and uh, and they were pretty good. They were a little, uh, they were more kind of rock, uh, rock. I wouldn't say pop. They had a couple songs that were a little poppy sounding, but it was more rock than <clears throat> than anything. But they had some good stuff. They were they were a pretty decent band. Uh, they yeah. had a really good guitar player. I I've got his number somewhere. I was gonna try to do a show with him or. Uh, uh, podcast with them that night in the country but it didn't get it accomplished but oh yeah yeah that's uh, they, was that anthony playing i think so yeah yeah kind of yeah. short little buff guy yeah yeah that's him. yeah <laughs> he can play he can he yeah. can dang sure play yes he can uh now so do you play guitar or 
I do. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not much of a picker. I, you know, I can play a little bit of lead stuff. I'm not very good at it, but mostly, mostly I'm a songwriter and I sing. So it's oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of my main thing. Once, you know, once I got songwriting, I kind of quit trying to be a, you know, telly picker and extraordinaire or whatever, you know? Yeah. But it was, uh, so I do play, you know, but songwriting was kind of my main thing, singing. Okay. What's, what's your, uh, kind of your process behind, uh, songwriting? You know, it kind of depends on the song. It's, um, songs are weird like that. Like, um, when you get to writing them, sometimes you'll have a really good idea and you'll write it in just a couple minutes and then other ones take months. So it really kind of just depends on what I'm going for. But most of the time I always write the lyrics first. That's kind of how I do it. Some people will write the, the music first and then do lyrics to it, but I'm more of a lyrics guy. So I'll do that and then I'll start playing around with a melody, try and get that handled. Well, I don't know how like some of the good, real good songwriters, what their method is, but I would think the lyrics would have to be be first because, you know, you're... The, this anybody can make a catchy beat i mean that's or you know you catchy tune is not not all that hard but if you can tell a good story and set it to music that's that's pretty that's something special and uh that so my favorite artists all have good stories behind their songs like uh the turnpike troubadour seven and or the diamonds and gasoline album might be one of the best albums like songwriting wise i've ever i've ever heard that's that album is so good oh yeah and and like the, i don't know what it is about the okies but they 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 know how to tell a story in a song you know when it goes back to like woody guthrie and then you know bob childers and now mm-hmm. boland and evan felker and all the damn quails all those guys they they yeah. it, it's all storytelling songs it's not a it's not a you know just a catchy hook and uh you know and a good melody it's you no know, it's it's a song if you you they tell a the whole story through it and so you feel like you've gone through a couple months in the span of three minutes oh and yeah. it's it's crazy how they can do that yeah. and so I, I would think you'd have like if you really wanted to be a talented songwriter the i would think the lyrics would have to be your your number one part but i don't know maybe that's not everybody's uh um, mindset right now i you know i've had it go both ways like i said most of the time i I write the lyrics first but um sometimes you know there's a couple songs i've written where i was playing around just strumming some stuff and just the the way it was sounding kind of brought up some ideas for lyrics you know so it it just kind of depends on the song really what you're trying to accomplish but yeah it's funny that uh them Oklahoma boys, they do an okay job. Yeah, yeah, they they, they really do. Yeah. <laughs> I like, that's a good dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, yeah. So like, when you you write out your lyrics and then like you put some music to it, and then like do you do you like go back and change wording around and uh, yeah. or is, okay. So yeah. I. I don't know, you know if you're a big podcast guy like myself, but like I, uh, do you listen to Joe Rogan at all? No, I don't. You should you should check him out. But he always talks about how he uh, he writes his comedy, and so he he says like there's times where like he'll stop his wife and he's like I got an idea, and then he has to like write, uh, say it into his phone so it goes to his voice notes, or yeah. like he'll he'll cover his ears and like run out of the room screaming so he can go write down this idea before it's gone. <laughs> And, uh, and so I've, I've kind of started doing that with, uh, you know, when I, there's been days where I just, I was riding around and I was like, I record something. I was like, well, that is just, just dog shit. I'm, <laughs> I'm not putting that out there. And I was like, where, where am I going with this? And there's days where I just don't have anything. And so I, uh, I was, so I was like, I, I should, I should try that. And so I've got a couple ideas I'm going to, going to kind of work around in my head tomorrow when I'm on horse, but it's I, and I wouldn't call myself a you know a comedian by any means, but there there is definitely like some bits that I have I have to kind of work it out as I go, and then that's the, the handy thing about being by myself out there. Yeah, uh, just riding along, I can I re- record something, play it right back, and like well now try that again. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so I I mean you know, I guess it's uh, but it's all it's all authentic thoughts that I have. It's you know 
I just try to make it make it come out in, in you know the most entertaining way possible, I guess. And then yeah. and then there's days where it's just <clears throat> the rants come <laughs> come they just flow <laughs> like wine, you know. <laughs> and oh yeah. It, <laughs> I just it, it just it just comes and so then I, I don't even have to edit those it's just you know make the sound sound quality good and and, and go because I, I was like yeah I was on a heater that one so I'll just keep it <laughs> say it's a table right yep that's right yeah. so yeah. I, it's funny just uh I guess it's all kind of an artistic process but it's a it's kind of neat um yeah. so uh like when you when you were uh, playing shows around here and and through the Northwest, they were all pretty pretty small type bar venues, or you know, uh, yeah, kinda. You know, I've I've played some bigger shows too. Most of the time, we just play bars. Um, but I, you know, I've like we go down to Santa Cruz. I got a friend down there named Jesse Daniel, who's uh, getting you know decently known in the Americana kind of scene. Okay. Like, you know Dale Watson? You heard of him? Yeah, yeah. So Dale, Dale Watson's got that Ameripolitan Awards. He kind of set up. Oh, okay. Uh, Jesse Jesse won one of the categories last year, so you know we go play with him and stuff, and we'll we'll fill a room with I don't know a few hundred people. Um, here in town, depending on how often we play, we can usually get a couple hundred people in the door. But like uh, I've played shows with uh, Whitey Morgan. Um, we did a big one opening for John Pardee. Okay. I, I don't, I don't listen to him, but we opened for him here in Reno. That was a pretty big yeah. one. We played with uh, Cody Johnson. And then um, recently, just a few months ago, we played, uh, opened up for Corb Lund here in town. Okay. So, you know, we played some of the bigger shows, but. Did you get to hang around with old Corb at all? You know, I, I met him a little bit before the show, um, but I didn't, I didn't get to see him afterwards they were on to the next one you know yeah but i was had, he seems like a cool guy i don't know if uh it seems like he'd be a good guy to, to hang with but yeah he was pretty laid back when i met him he uh you know he's like oh are you playing i was like yeah i'm, I'm playing he's like oh cool i'm corb you know shook hands with him and whatnot he's like well what time are you on and i told him and he's like all right well we're gonna go get a cheeseburger and then he just kind of <laughs> left you know but <laughs> just vanished into his his canadian uh, mystique <laughs> uh, uh, yeah yeah but it's it's fun to watch him play i've seen him twice now because he came he came up here a few years back during the summertime and i went and saw him it was a free show and that was really good and then seeing him inside man he is a showman oh yeah 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 he's uh he's really good we me and my my cousin robbie we went to we went up to denver to see uh well initially we we're gonna go up like we make it a three day weekend and then we decided, well, we'll leave we'll leave Thursday, make it a four day weekend. And then I I just happened to look at the schedule up in Fort Collins to see who was playing and Bolin happened to be playing Wednesday night. So I was mm-hmm. like, Well, we're making it a five day deal. And uh, <laughs> so we went up and watched Bolin and then um there's a there's a kid that plays fiddle for uh Josh Abbott band that I that I grew up with. And uh, they were playing, <clears throat> playing like, I think it was Friday, Saturday night at uh, at the Grizzly Rose. So cool. we and and we went and saw them both nights. But Cora Blonde opened for him the first night, and he just put on a hell of a show. You know, come out wearing uh, Wranglers, you know, felt hat, wild rag, and a hockey sweater. Not a jersey, but like the old time sweater. <laughs> and just just Canadian as shit. <laughs> <laughs> But he was he put on a hell of a show. He did a little deal where he uh he he called up for a round of Canadian whiskey just to tray of shots and he went and handed it out to every band member and they took the shot and kept playing without missing a beat. Even the <laughs> even the stand up bass kept plugging along. So it was uh yeah. it was pretty cool. Which I'm yeah. sure, you know, they've been playing for that long, it's not any big deal. But it, it makes for a hell of a hell of a, a trick on stage anyways. Oh, totally. Yeah, I'll have to try and steal that one, man. <clears throat> yeah, it was pretty good. And he, yeah, like I said, he just burned it down. You know, it was, it's one of those shows that probably been pretty hard to follow. But, you know, oh, Josh, yeah. they, they, they know how to put on a show. I'm not not huge, huge fans of their music. It's okay. But, you know, they uh, but they, they can put on a show. That's for dang sure. They, they do put on a hell of a show. Yeah. And, uh, but it's a... Uh, 
Yeah, it was pretty neat. I, I'd like to I'd like to go see Corb again at some point. Um, but I, I I always like those uh, those uh, kind of more independent. I don't know if they considered underground or whatnot, but just outside of Nashville type uh, artists. Yeah, and yeah. it seems like like Cody Johnson and Aaron Watson are kind of like the gateway drug to to everything else. And uh, you know they're they're just they just kind of toe that line of uh of mainstream and uh and but they're they're still you know still got a little bit of independent streak to them oh, yeah. and, uh, and then once once you start listening to them and then you get into the to the other stuff the next thing you know you're listening to people like whitey morgan and uh like Coulter wall and you know uh and then well some of these uh these cowboy artists that i i hadn't even heard of and that people had sent me like that matt robertson or um, Dave Stamey and, and some of those, Bryn Hill, you know, I'd yeah. never heard of them, but they're more kind of regional type, type acts. And, but they're, they're dang, dang good musicians, good songwriters. And, but you'd never, ever hear them on, on Nashville radio. Oh no, no. And that's, that's, uh, something I I've started falling into more lately was more of the cowboy singer dudes like, uh, like Dave Stamey and, um, there's a guy named Don Edwards who's real good. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Coulter Wall, that, that whole thing kind of opened me up to all that stuff that I, you know, because I was used to, as far as cowboy songs, I was, you know, used to like George Strait kind of stuff or Chris Ledoux. Yeah. Or like yeah. even, uh, what's that guy's, uh, Casey Donahue. Does he do some cowboy yeah. songs? Yeah. So uh, kind of kind of rodeo type stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I, you know, I'd heard of them before, but. You know, Coulter Wall kind of opened the floodgates for me on that. And then, um, you know, I started listening to a lot of Ian Tyson lately. Oh, yeah. Which, you know, because my friend uh, Forrest, he's a he's a cowboy singer. He, I think I sent you one of his songs. Yeah, he's the Mule Skinner guy you were saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was, it, was, uh, it was pretty cool. I uh, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, the, it was like Bronder, Yonder, Bronder, Donder or something like that. Oh, yeah. Bronder, Donder, Yonder. Uh-huh. Yeah, kind of, kind of making fun of the old, uh, like the the resurgence of bluegrass, you know, the Yonder yeah. Mountain String Band, and Oh yeah. Brother Where Art Thou, and shit like that. So it was, it was I, I, I appreciated the little, little knock. <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah, it's uh, the cowboy songs. That's kind of one of the next records I want to do. I want to do a whole record of cowboy tunes, you know. Yeah, but, I'll have to uh, send you a uh, little CD that uh my dad and that Billy Whitfield made there. Uh, they was just, uh, my dad just kind of does either kind of like talking blues songs, you know, or, or mm-hmm. like cowboy poetry more than anything. It's not cause he yeah. doesn't sing. It's, uh, you know, he did the rendition of the ragged old flag on the, on the 4th of July episode. Yeah. And, uh, and then Billy can sing a little bit, but he can really play the guitar. I mean, like really, really play the guitar. He's a, he's a finger picker and, yeah. uh, and he's just man he he's good and uh but they they did a little record together and it's uh i think it was it's called trail ride and they and they just okay. got they got a bunch of bunch of little it's i think it's like 25 tracks on it but they're you know like two and a half minute maybe they're just little little short songs but they're pretty cool and then my dad does some poetry and cool. i'm starting to get into that cowboy poetry a little bit and uh oh, yeah. it's pretty pretty neat stuff that waddy mitchell i wish i would have I kind of got a little uh, got a little nervous when I interviewed him, and I, I cut it short because I thought we were we were way over time and, and we weren't. But he he was he was a cool guy. I'd like to get him back on and pick his brain a little bit more. But yeah, he was a fun one to listen to. He's um, I learned about him through Andy Hedges' Cowboy Crossroads show. You ever listen? Yeah, to that? yeah, that is a really cool one. Yeah, that's how I heard about Waddy, and you know, I've I've been listening to a lot of cowboy poetry lately as well, just because you know what a way to tell a story. Oh yeah, yeah, they do a great job. Um, like old, there's a guy I really like, uh, Baxter Black. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I've been listening because he's got some stuff on Spotify and all that. But um, no, great ways to tell a story. It's you know nice to pull some inspiration from it. You know. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy, and uh, I was it was it was cool listening to Waddy uh, on that that Cowboy Crossroads episode when he was talking about how they built that uh, in a, a Cowboy Poetry gathering there in Elko, and you know they they put out like two hundred chairs and they and they just said, well, 
stop putting them out. There's going to be like four people that show up. And then next <laughs> thing I know they had like 2000 people there. And now it's yeah. 30 years later, it's a, a pretty huge deal. So yeah, I think, yeah, uh, I don't know if my dad's listening or not, but uh, anyhow, I think that's going to be his Christmas present is I'm going to fly him out so we can go to the cowboy, the cowboy poetry gathering and that's cool. maybe do a couple shows with, uh, with some of those guys out there. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, something I've, I've wondered about, because they do it in, what, January, isn't it? Uh, it's like end of January, or first part of February, something like that. Is that because that's kind of like a slow season if you're working cows? or? Um, it can be. be it? Huh. Um, I'm not sure why they did it then, but, you know, you're you're typically calving heifers then. You, usually your, your first calf heifers, you'll calve first. Uh, so you can you can focus your attention on them, and then you you kick your your uh, your older cows back a little bit, like a, a month or so. So uh, so you can focus on your heifers first, and and back home anyways, it was like uh, late January, early February is when you calved heifers, and uh, and then kind of March, uh, into February, March when when you calved your cows, and so I imagine it's pretty similar out here, but. I don't know that Elko country gets pretty damn cold, so they yeah. might kick it back a, a month or so. Okay, yeah, because I I know most of the guys who perform out there they're working cowboy dudes. Yeah, so they might have just had to do it because that was you know when it got slower for them, but I I didn't know. Yeah, it could be, and it just depends on on where you're at, where and who you're working for. You know, some. There might be some that are right in the middle of cabin season and they have to, you know, they have to play like hell to get the time off or, and, you know, there might be some that they're just kind of gearing up for it. They're not, not really ready to, to start cabin yet, but that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's right on the edge of being just real busy. So, okay. But do you think, I mean, I don't know, it, it would make a little more sense to do it more like November, but then you got the holiday season. So maybe that's just where, where it fit in. That's kind of how the, you know, the Denver stock show is too. It's, uh, oh, okay. it runs, uh, middle of January to middle of February. And it's, it's right, you know, right in the middle of cabin season and stuff, but you still, you know, it's a big deal. So people still gotta, gotta go up there. And yeah. so yeah. I don't know. It's just one of those deals. I'm not sure why, why they have it then, but, Really, kind of middle of summer would probably be a, a more ideal time for everybody because that's that's when it's a little slower. But no, hmm. yeah, so, I don't know. It's a. Uh, I'll have to yeah. maybe maybe, they just, maybe they'll ask Waddy. Yeah, maybe they just gotta have something to do, and it's so damn cold outside. <laughs> <clears throat> it might be. I know. Yeah. I know that. Like I said, that Elko country gets real cold. Yeah, they might all have a cabin so. fever by then. Probably so. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool, man. I think uh, I think we're, we'll go ahead and wrap her there, and uh, we'll, we'll get you back on for one of our music episodes. I think we're going to try to do that every now and then. And, uh, oh, cool. Yeah. That was that was fun. I like to – like I said, we, we tried to start with music and it kind of went off the rails, but we, we, we kind of redeemed ourselves there in the end. But, uh, yeah, that was a good uh, yeah. So, anyway, it was, it was a lot of fun, and I like talking about music and, and, and shit like that. So, yeah. Um, well, uh, go ahead and plug your stuff. Tell everybody where they can find you and uh, go order some boots from this fella. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, I'm uh, on Instagram mostly at Houston Boot Co. And then if you're in the Reno area, um, is it September 8th through the 16th? I'll have a booth over at the Snafflebit Futurity, the Livestock Event Center. So if anyone wants to stop by and say hi or anything like that, that's where I'll be. Cool. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks for coming on, and uh, we'll we'll catch you next time. All right, thanks sure. for having me. Man. Yeah, you yeah. You wanna you wanna sign us out? Sure, let's do it. All right. Well, uh, move your ass. We're burning daylight. <laughs> thanks, buddy. We'll see you. Hey, thanks. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Well, folks, there you go, Mr. Jake Houston uh, at Houston Boot Co on Instagram, and he just now told me. Forgot to mention it, but his uh, music page on Instagram is at Conway Shitty, which is hilarious. And uh, yeah, was, what a cool guy! I liked him, and uh, turned out to be a really talented musician. 
I should have told me that beforehand. He told me a little bit but about being a, a musician, but yeah, he turns out he's really good. I'm going to go watch him play live, and uh, y'all be jealous. Anyhow, uh, thanks again, Jake, for coming on. I do appreciate it. Go check him out. Uh, go check out his work. He does good work, and uh, maybe go uh, maybe go order a pair of boots from him if you need if you need some. Uh, anyhow, uh, moving on. I got a big announcement I need to make, and uh, been waiting on this for a while, and just uh, been uh, been around the block a time or two, and uh, this is kind of where we settled. It made the most sense. You know, all the way around for me, and uh, and now my new partner, Miss is uh, Amber Clark. Uh, her and her husband TJ, we met them out of branding. Become pretty good friends with them. Uh, they their boy is about the same age as my little girl, and then they've got an older daughter and a, and a brand new, I guess almost a year old son. And uh, yeah, they're just good people. And uh, Amber's got her own little boutique and tack tack shop kind of deal she uh she trades and sells a lot of a lot of tack just kind of whatever you need and uh does print some hats and shirts and everything just kind of kind of a jack of all trades and uh kind of been out of the business a little bit uh with kids and life and whatnot so she was looking to get back in uh to doing her thing anyways and i was looking for somebody to to run my store and uh and it just worked out good. So she is going to take over that that part of the deal. Uh, of course, we'll be uh, we'll be in close contact with uh, with everything. But she is she's pretty well going to handle that deal for me. And uh, and then she's also going to use my storefront for <clears throat> for her boutique. And uh, we'll do uh, we'll do a lot of collaboration. And uh, she is really talented uh, artistically. She she designs a lot of her own shirts and. A lot, most of her designs come from stuff that she sketched herself. So, uh, she's gonna, she'll be uh, designing some shirts and, uh, and some koozies and stuff for me here in the future. And I think it's gonna be a really cool deal. And, uh, we're, we're pretty excited about it. So, um, welcome her aboard. Thanks again, Amber, for, for doing that. And, uh, the, the new, the first thing up will be the hats. They are, we are doing a pre-sale, pre-order deal right now. We're going to run that for a week, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll make a, a, our bulk order next week and we'll, uh, we should have enough, uh, should bring in enough to where we could, uh, we can order some extra hats to have on, on hand, uh, as the orders keep coming in and, uh, <clears throat> you know, expand our product line into some t-shirts and, uh, quarter zips. We got, we got all sorts of stuff that we're gonna, we're gonna get here in the, in the near future. So, uh, stay tuned for that. But, uh, I'm really excited about it. And I think it's gonna be a really cool, cool deal. So, uh, got some, got some good interviews in the works. Uh, nothing set in stone yet, but we, uh, uh, everybody, I've got a kind of a verbal commitment on, on some really cool ones. So, uh, Stay tuned for that. <clears throat> in the meantime, we'll keep plugging along, and uh, you guys keep tuning in every day. I sure do appreciate it. It uh, uh, makes me feel good when I, when I get some good feedback from you guys, and, and I get quite a bit of it. Uh, go check out the, the playlist. Uh, we get the featured music playlist, and that's everything that's been on the show so far. Uh, and then we've got the, the request list, and it's been added to pretty extensively here in the last day or so, and... I was listening to it today, headed to town, and it is awesome. Uh, you guys really, really have some good taste in music, so, uh, go check that out. I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the, the description, show notes type deal, and, uh, you can, you can go check them out. And, uh, I think you're, if you need some new tunes to listen to, um, everything that's on there is, uh, at least on the request list is stuff that, um, most of y'all probably haven't heard and, uh, and it's really, really good stuff. So go check it out. And, uh, that being said, uh, I guess go follow me on, on all the social medias, follow the show, Burning Daylight on Facebook and YouTube and on Twitter, Instagram and Snapchat. I'm at Movie Your Ass, M-O-V-E-Y-E-R-A-S-S. 
uh, my personal pages are Matt McKinley on Facebook and at MickerMac85 on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Uh, go follow me there. Uh, if you got any topics, suggestions, uh, interview requests, or if you want to come on the show yourself, you think uh, you got some some cool topics to talk about, or if you think it'd be a good conversation, uh, as you as you've noticed, we uh, <clears throat> I am not above just uh, a show going off the rails and uh, you know just having fun with it. So uh, anyhow, if you think uh, think you or somebody you know would be be a good fit for the show, let me know. Uh, shoot me a message on any of those outlets or or send me an email matt at burning-daylight.com <coughs> and uh, that of course being my my website burning-daylight.com i've got a couple blog posts up there <coughs> got the storefront and also there's if you don't know how to uh how to find the the podcast on a regular basis uh, if you're not sure how do the apps work just go to that website there's a tab that says listen and it'll have the last 50 episodes available there and uh yeah you can you can listen to it right there just click play and it'll it'll do its thing so uh go check it out then of course there's my storefront click on the on this i don't know, i can't remember if it says store or shop but either one of those two and uh you can you can order your hat there and also the the fantasy football link is there too so if you're interested in playing fantasy football we've got several spots still open it's bound to be a good time i have a lot of shit talking a lot of fun and uh yeah just uh you sign up there you pay your entry and uh you'll download a pdf file that will have a link to the league and uh you you can join right there so anyways uh go check all that out and uh I've got some editing to do, so um, that being said, I'm going to get at it, so move your ass. We're burning daylight. Soon.
into trouble Best think twice before you buy that double Cause someone's bound to burst your bubble On a hell of a rain